Streaming live, this is News Nation Now. And a good Thursday. Welcome into News Nation Now. We've got breaking news that we were talking about this morning, all about Big Ten football, all about Wisconsin versus Nebraska. As you can see on your screen, that game coming up, supposed to be Saturday, has now been canceled. I want to bring in a friend of mine, Matt Barnes, who covers the Big Ten out of Michigan. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Hey, what's up there, Aaron? How are you? All right, so you got this news uh, that this game has been canceled. As many as 12 people associated with the Wisconsin football team have tested positive for the coronavirus. What's the first thought there in Big Ten country? Well, the first thought in Big Ten country is this is the exact worst situation because when the schedule came out that said there would be eight weeks of games and no bye weeks and no room for error, this is exactly why everyone wanted uh, to have that room for error because one test, one week gone, the game is a no contest, not even a postponement. It is no contest, canceled, gone. Uh, so that's the worry here is that uh, one outbreak could mean one game gone, two games gone, uh, and there's just no chance to make it up. Matt, what are you hearing from Wisconsin and from conference officials as far as the protocol moving forward? I mean, like you mentioned, there's only eight games in this conference scheduled for each of the teams in the Big Ten. When you strike one out, it creates kind of a, a, a weird situation moving forward for the other six weeks of the year. Absolutely. Yeah, you're worried about the domino effect first, which is, is it just one game or will it turn into more? Because the way the Big Ten has it structured with their players if you test positive, you're not out for two weeks. You're out for three weeks. Two weeks because of the CDC 14-day uh, guidelines that we've seen throughout America. But they added an extra week in the Big Ten for heart monitoring. Uh, and so with that, for instance, Graham Mertz, who is the quarterback for Wisconsin, the starting quarterback, had a great debut uh, last week. He's now out for three weeks. And that is big for Wisconsin uh, obviously for their chances to make the Big Ten championship, but also the college football playoff, which they had high hopes for. And how does this affect the rest of the Big Ten? Well, if Wisconsin can't play, let's say, one or two more weeks, again, you're taking games away from other Big Ten teams. Uh, it, it just it adds another layer to what is already a convoluted season that just got started for the Big Ten last week. If you're just now joining us here on NewsNationNow.com or the News Nation Now Facebook page, Matt Barnes joins us. He covers the Big Ten out of Michigan. Big news, 12 people associated with the Wisconsin football team, including the head coach Paul Chris, testing positive for the coronavirus. I want to read a statement, Matt, to you from Wisconsin Athletic Director Barry Alvarez. This is on our NewsNationNow.com website. With the number of positive cases in that short timeline, the chancellor and I felt we have an issue that we have to make this decision and get our arms around and control the COVID and virus now before it gets out of hand. When you hear that, that they need to wrap their arms around a, quote, issue that they're saying, there's got to be bigger concerns here for not only Wisconsin, but the Illinois Fighting Illini, who they just played last Thursday, one week ago today, uh, or I guess it was Friday, one week ago tomorrow. Uh, there's got to be bigger concerns than just Wisconsin, though. Oh, I agree. That, that's the worry is that, you know, Graham Mertz, the quarterback, we first got the report that he tested positive on Monday. Who knows how long he was contagious for? Now, you know, Wisconsin and all the Big Ten teams are testing every day those daily antigen tests, which can come back with some false positives. But he took that PCR test afterward, and that is when he and we found out 11 others, including the head coach, were positive. So, yeah, if you're Illinois, you test. They all came back and said they were negative. Uh, this is a big deal for, uh, you know, a school like Nebraska. I just read where they were trying to uh, get a game for this Saturday against a non-conference, but the Big Ten voted no on that because they're trying to keep it within these uh, Big Ten teams only. So, uh, yeah, if you're Wisconsin with the daily testing you do to have an outbreak like this, this is a big worry because the whole point of the Big Ten delaying was to make sure they got the testing right to prevent an outbreak. Clearly didn't work. Matt, you brought up testing, and let's talk about that for a moment. The Big Ten has a very strict testing policy. You already mentioned that if there is a positive test, it is not the normal 10-day or 14-day quarantine process. It's a full three weeks. What is the testing protocol in the Big Ten? I understand that it is a, it's a daily thing that goes on for anyone associated with that football team. Yeah, exactly. So it's a daily antigen test. Uh, they have to come into the facility, take that test. And uh, it, it's, a, it's one of the more rapid tests. So you get your, your, your uh, result back fairly quickly. And then if you test positive, you get that PCR test, which is the more accurate test, as we've learned uh, throughout the weeks here. 
once you do, again, you're out for three weeks if you are a player. Two weeks uh, off the field. The third week you're allowed to start practicing, but you can't be on the you can't play the game because they want to spend a week testing your heart. So that is where it's different than the other conferences we've been seeing. And they don't necessarily have a standard for how many players uh, are necessary to play a game, like, like we've seen maybe in the SEC, I think, is one of those, uh, where you have to have a certain amount of players in each position. Uh, the Big Ten kind of just figure out how many players you have. In this case, Wisconsin saw they had a bit of an outbreak and just called it. All right, across Lake Michigan from Wisconsin is Michigan, your state. What are officials doing there for Michigan State, for Michigan, uh, in concerns that, that this may not be only one game cancellation? I have a feeling that officials may consider more cancellations because cases are going to pop up in what are a couple of hotbed states in Wisconsin and Michigan right now for the coronavirus. Well, the entire Midwest, yeah. The entire Midwest is going through it right now, um, especially Wisconsin. They're really having it bad. But, yeah, I think what the schools in the Big Ten country are doing, uh, whether you're Michigan, Indiana, Ohio State, well, all these, uh, you're just really doubling down on telling your players, if you want to play, you have to take this seriously. Uh, because, again, one test, you're out for three games, but that – two or three, four or five positive tests, and all of a sudden the whole game's gone. Uh, and, you know, your national championship, Big Ten championship hopes are gone. So uh, what we've heard from coaches uh, in our region is strictly this just furthers the point that we need to be cautious of um, where these players go after they leave the facility uh, and really preaching to them the aspect of this whole thing. Because while it's hard to prevent, you know, getting COVID from other people at times, uh, what these – student athletes do when they leave the facility it's all the more important now to make sure you're uh, staying away from others and and really wearing your mask and socially distancing matt you have uh, heard from officials we have heard from big 10 officials we've heard from coaches as far as the players are concerned any players that you follow on social media or or, or maybe parents that you've heard from that are adamantly concerned or is this a blip on the radar for those that are associated with the programs in the big 10 I feel like, any, if anything, what I've seen on social media from players and parents and those even just fans, you could say, there's, if anything, there's a little bit more anger and frustration with Wisconsin and what happened there where this happened. Uh, because Big Ten fans, parents, coaches, players, they've all been waiting a long time to play. They've seen the ACC and SEC and other conferences get going. And so here we are. You had one full week of football, a lot of excitement, and then this happens. And how does this happen uh, after – what has been preached to all these players. So I think it's more frustration, if anything. There is obviously concern to make sure uh, Paul Chris, their head coach, and the players recover. Um, but there is a lot of frustration, especially from Nebraska. Uh, if you don't know their story, they were frustrated already because they wanted to play from the beginning. Uh, they were one of the three Big Ten schools of the 14 that said, let's play, and the 11 said, not, said no. So if you're Nebraska, First, you opened the season losing to Ohio State, getting a tough draw there. And now the second game, your first home game against Wisconsin is canceled because of this. It's a lot of frustration in Big Ten country. If you're just joining us now on News Nation, you're watching on NewsNationNow.com. You're also watching on our News Nation Facebook page. We are taking questions right now on our Facebook page. Uh, you may not be able to answer this one, Matt, but Aaron Michael Land asked, are these players sick? Are they experiencing symptoms that we know of? Is there any guidance from Wisconsin officials or the Big Ten of what exactly is going on with those 12? No, so and then that's the thing. We're not able to answer it because Wisconsin won't give that information. Uh, we do know the head coach, Paul Chris, has come out in a statement and said that he has had mild to no symptoms at all. Uh, but as for the players, he's been very, very quiet and tight-lipped about what he can and cannot say due to HIPAA. Uh, we only know two of the players because of reporting that it was their two starting quarterback or their starting quarterback and their backup. But beyond that, they won't let us know what other players are. Um, we, do, we do know some are support staff, so they're not all players. Uh, we don't know how they're doing or anything like that. And I doubt we'll get that from Wisconsin until they're fully recovered. Matt, before you go, explain no contest. You mentioned this uh, earlier on when we started here. This game will not be rescheduled. This game will not be uh, – another team will not come in and play Nebraska. Another team will not be able to play Wisconsin. Explain what you mean when you say no contest. Yeah, so because this game can't be postponed because the Big Ten schedule doesn't have room 
to put a new game in. Uh, no contest means no win, no loss. And what's really important in terms of the Big Ten's sake, and this really is important for Wisconsin because they're a top 10 team. The way the Big Ten structured it is that if you want to make the Big Ten championship, you have to play a minimum of six games. So Wisconsin can still go 7-0 now. That's the best record they can get and still make the Big Ten championship. But if let's say they lose two more games and the maximum games they can play is five. Even if they're undefeated, they can't go to the Big Ten championship game anymore. So this is something to watch because they obviously will have one less game, as will Nebraska. But if they happen to lose a couple more, their chances of, you know, the Big Ten championship, the college football playoff, they're gone uh, because they simply will have not played enough games. And just in general, uh, this is a big deal for them because uh, the amount of players that will be gone for this next game whenever they play, I think it's Purdue. Uh, and then the third week, uh, these are big games that these players are missing because of the Big Ten's rules on how many games you're gone for. So no contest for this one. But now let's see if they're able to field enough guys and stay healthy and make sure they control this outbreak so they can play next week at Purdue. You, you, you brought up Purdue, uh, obviously, another game. What's the likelihood that under the new rules with coronavirus, this new 2020 football season from the Big Ten, that Wisconsin's going to have enough people on the field to be able to play next week against Purdue? So it, it seems like they'll be safe in terms of having enough players okay. to play. Um, but again, the big issue it sounds like is their quarterback issue. They're going to be on their fourth string quarterback. Their first two uh, reportedly are positive. Their third uh, stringer is injured, and they're on their fourth string quarterback. So if if you're wondering how many quarterbacks they have available, they may only have two for all we know, two or three. Maybe there's some walk ons that we don't know about, uh, or some guys who played it in in high school. Uh, so that's something they'll have to navigate themselves. But as far as having enough players, they should be okay. But what we still don't know is if any more players will test positive. If this is a true outbreak, yeah. this might just be the tip of the iceberg. Right you, now we're at 12. Let's see after more testing if there are any more. Matt, you bring up something very good. Last question to you as we go forward here. The possibility of more tests coming out, uh, positive, false positive. False, you know, these tests, we've thrown around these words for quite some time. But in all likelihood, if this is, again, to use this word, a super spreader, we're probably going to see a few more tests over the next few days because, again, the Big Ten does test daily. That's right. And so what's happening right now with Wisconsin is I think as of Wednesday, uh, as of yesterday, or it might have even been Tuesday, uh, they shut down all practices for seven days. So for seven days, they can't be in the facility uh, they haven't seen each other. I'm not sure if that means they're testing every day because they're not in the facility, uh, but I would assume they still are uh, just to get an idea of how big this outbreak is. We have not had an update from them yet today. I would uh, I would think we would so that they can put minds at ease about how this uh, outbreak is being handled. Uh, but as of now, yes, we're at the 12 number. They need to keep testing to figure out this is where it ends or if it, it spread from there. Uh, and then I think keeping them out of the facility and hopefully they're uh, socially distanced at their residences where they, you know, where they are just, you know, t doing classwork, uh, they should be okay uh, and not contract the virus. But yeah, that's the big issue right now is uh, getting the testing done, making sure there aren't any more people getting it. Uh, because if so, yeah, they're, they're, in, they're in some trouble in terms of getting that next game played. Matt Bard's breaking down the Big Ten as Wisconsin versus Nebraska has been canceled. They will not make this up. Matt, thank you for joining us, and thank you for upstaging me as I dress down for football days. You dress up with a suit and tie. Anytime, anytime. I man, thought so. Right. Matt Barnes, we appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate it, buddy. Anytime, bud. Again, Wisconsin versus Nebraska canceled. Uh, we're going to continue to follow this. News Nation had this story late last night. She's producing. Sydney, you put the story up. Well done. Good job. Uh, so we're going to continue to follow this one. Make sure you join us tonight for News Nation. 7 p.m. Central, 8 o'clock out on the East Coast. It's on WG in America. You can also download our News Nation app. And get this, I just heard this is breaking news. You can download our app for free. That's right, free. Thanks for joining us for News Nation. Now, I am Aaron Nolan. Have a great morning. Streaming live, this is News Nation Now.